So this is the front of the Miller Diversion. Obviously we got our on off button, it's a very simple machine. We got our gas out to the torch. And then you will notice here that this is not the way a Miller Diversion comes factory. These have been swapped out for DENS connectors so I can use the traditional DENS like so. All right, when TIG welding, you want the ground to be on the positive, the TIG torch to be hooked up to the negative. This one happens to be color matched, so we're gonna hook it in the ground. and then the TIG torch. TIG torch is your standard inert gas fitting that hooks in right here. Snug it up a little bit and you're done. An 11 16th wrench The back of the machine is similar, same inert gas hose fitting. So obviously we've got to turn the machine on and each machine has the on off switch in a different location. Some are on the front, some are on the back. You'll notice here we can select up to 125 amps on 110 volt power. You want to make sure that you clean your material because clean material is happy material. Clean all the edges, get all the oil and grease off so that it's good to start welding. As we get ready to weld this out, we're gonna tack the ends, both ends with enough weld there to keep it from coming apart when you weld. One of the worst things you can do is tack the ends and have it bust apart while you're welding. Never a good thing for what we're trying to do here. And TIG welding should look something like this. This is nice and smooth, no spatter, nothing coming out. A little arc shot here. Not my best, necessarily, but good enough for working around a camera for sure. See how this just nice and smooth and putting the rod at the leading edge of the puddle. So here we're going to purposely switch these around. We're going to put the positive and the negative side and the negative and the positive side. Let's take a look at an arc shot here. This is what I'm seeing from behind the hood. You can tell there that it's just not working. The polarity is backwards and it's going to ball your tungsten just like this. Obviously, I did not push the pedal all the way down to where it exploded, but I just wanted to give you enough to give you the idea. Let's put the cup off to show you the spatter on the screen. Not a good thing. 
As you can see here one more time, this is what it should look like. No spatter going everywhere, no nasty fumes, a nice, smooth, continuous weld. This is what we're going to strive for. With the machine set up correctly, the polarity is correct, the gas flow correct, everything, you want it to look something like this. Thanks for watching this episode on how to set up your TIG welder. Hopefully it can help you in your welding journey. I know I still, to this day, occasionally hook up a TIG welder backwards. And like I said, when I started, I had no idea how to do this. Hopefully we covered all the basics for you. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode.